Let's quickly get you caught up with the fast-paced world of Travis Coomer. He's had great success out at the truck pulls and the oil fields, but today's the day he inches ever closer to making his black gold moonshine brand a reality. See what happens today as we take a trip to Oldham, Kentucky and get a taste in Coomer's country. In order to make money, Travis Coomer drills oil wells, searching for that black gold. Dang, dang. This week I'm heading out to B.O.B. Battle of the Bluegrass. The big long truck's going up there and beat them. You find a number on it? No, I don't see no numbers on it yet. I'm having a little bit of issue with my steering. It's real hard to cut. I'm gonna put a new steering box on there where I can steer the thing. Yeah. And this says check level. That ain't no caching number. No. Ain't right no there it is. Right there it is. Right there it is. See right there at seven. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah. Clean that off. I gotta get the number off this thing before I know which one to buy. I'm gonna blow up with some air. Yeah, it might help though. Turn that air on. At least you could say it's please. Please turn that air on. Oh, there you are. Let me take a picture of it. That's the best way to do it. Take a picture. Uh oh, these modern phones. These new phones, I can hardly figure out how to make a phone call anymore. He's smarter uh, than you are, ain't he? Yeah. Must less take a picture. Did you say you had to go somewhere today? Yeah, I gotta go, uh, <clears throat> I gotta go meet Tom. Oh, Tom McConnell, he's my moonshine partner. What time are you supposed to meet Tom? I gotta be up there at one o'clock. Is that uh, our time or Eastern time? Um. Let's see. Oh, that's, what time is it? Well, it's about 11.30, 12 o'clock right now. They are, yeah, they are on Eastern time, ain't it? I'm gonna have to go, I'm gonna be late. Sure are, you done late now. Uh-oh, I gotta go. <laughs> Tom's gonna be mad. He'll be all right. Oh, I can't believe I forgot the time zone difference. I'll just tell him I'm already on my way. Yeah, Tom. Yeah, this is Travis. I'm on my way, I'm on the interstate, but I fooled around and got on 64. Yeah, well, I'll turn around and come back and get on 71. All right, see. That'll work. You look like you're on the interstate. Well, he he don't, he, he don't matter. I... He'll be waiting? Yeah. Call and see if you can get us one of them steering boxes. I'll see y'all later. I gotta get up there. I'll see what I can do. Okay. It's a little lie, but it don't make no difference. David. Hey, Tom. And what's going on? Oh, not too much. Well, Travis is late. Is he? <laughs> so he said his uh, GPS sent him on I-64, and he's supposed to obviously be on 71. Now, he's only pulled his truck here for 25 or 30 years, but anyways, I got a Tom Tom, so I never get lost. There you go. <laughs> so, well, how did the project come out, man? Well, we'll find out. Well, when Travis gets here, we'll, uh, it's going to be a few minutes, but I'm glad you could meet us here in LaGrange, kind of a halfway point where he's going, I'm going, you're going. Uh, this is a pretty neat town. It's gorgeous. I love it. I think it came into existence about 1850. The county's been here since 1825. 
They've really taken the time to revitalize their downtown district with shopping, and it's really turned into a really nice tourist destination, to be honest with you. Not too often you see a train track in the middle of downtown Main Street. <laughs> That's the cool thing. Uh, the first time I was here, I was at a restaurant, and I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, everything starts vibrating. I hadn't really paid attention. I thought it was like a trolley track. Right. And I've been coming to LaGrange all my life, but I didn't realize they say like 30 trains a day come through downtown, and it will shake the ground. It's pretty wild. Well, this is the place, uh, Main Street Bourbon and Ale, I think it'd be a good place to meet Travis. This place is phenomenal. It's like I'm uh, walking into uh, a little uh, German beer haven or something here. What's the story on this place? This building's been many things over the years. It's been a boarding house, a private residence, a dentist's office. Uh, it's, uh, it's went through a lot of changes over the years. And we've added decks on both sides and a patio, and uh, so it's just been a uh, work in progress. Tom, I saw something else. Is that like a train observation tower out there? It is. It was, it was built last year by the uh, uh, LaGrange Main Street program. It's a tower for photographers uh, to take photographs of trains because people come here from all over America to do that. Plus, you can take your grandkids up there and they can wave at the engineers, so it's, it's really a cool thing. Well, we'll leave them chatting at the bar, and hopefully when we come back, Travis will have found his way into LaGrange on Coomer's country. Coomer's country is being brought to you by Black Gold Moonshine, real Kentucky moonshine made the right way. And by Bit Brokers, tricones, hole openers, cutters, and more. Don't drill without Bit Brokers. And by Oldham County Tourism, three bourbon brands, horse farms, and 30 trains a day. And by Jeffrey Machine, the world's largest privately owned auger company. And by Dustless Blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. Travis has made his way to LaGrange just a little late. I guess he figures he can just sneak in the back way. Being late 101 always makes you look like you've been there longer than what you have been. Well, Travis Coomer. Well, it's about time, David. We were inside talking to the owner, Tom, and he said, we were up there waiting on you. He said you were out here. I've been here for two hours, and everybody hollering I was late. I don't know what's going on. Uh, well, what do you got in that box? I got something you want to try. Well, let's have After our last meeting, we went back to the to the steel and to the lab a little okay. bit. And uh, we'll start off with the uh, good old fashioned sugar shine. Holds the bead pretty good. Yeah, I might have those lids on there a little tight. <laughs> But I followed your recipe exactly how you give it to me. This nose here has been passed down the Coomer family for generations. My grandpa, he could sniff out the place back in the woods for miles away. I didn't cut it down to 80 proof. I figured we'd go to 100 and see what it tastes like there, and then we can always cut it back even further if we need to. I can smell for three miles deep. Smells pretty good. It is good. This is a moment of truth. Did David change the recipe enough for my liking? Pretty good. I got my poker face on, but that's pretty daggum good stuff. Got some other flavors here, too. Um, this here is some cinnamon. Cinnamon? Yep. And I call this my sin water. So everything that you're tasting right now is 100% natural. Boy, you can smell the cinnamon in it. It's, it's gonna be a little hot, too, on the tongue. Ooh wee, that's hot. That's pretty good. It's real good. I like it myself. That's all my friend now, if you take this and you put it in the freezer and get it really cold, you won't keep it long because your friends will drink it all up. And I got one more here to try. This one is a coffee flavored. I love the look of it. It looks just like crude oil. But uh, give that one a try and see what you think of it. It smells like I'm about to get a tat tipsy. 
That fly likes that. Yeah, he? apparently he does. <laughs> Now, be honest with me, do we need to tweak it one way or another? Do you think it needs more coffee taste yeah, to it? Yeah, probably, probably more okay. coffee taste. Um, what proof is that? That's 100 proof. Okay, okay, I know it was pretty warm. 100 proof coffee, that ought to wake you up. So, and everything we've used in there is all natural, so that's yeah. just hey, coffee. Hey, what what you think, man? what's going on, Tom? Well, uh, I got tied up in there. Yeah, I but, heard that. Uh, uh, guy had a lot of stories, he even had ghost stories, but what do you think? Why, it's pretty good. Uh, I like uh, the clear moonshine real good. Uh, I think the coffee probably needs to tone the alcohol down in a little and up the coffee. Okay, okay. But, you know, unless we want 100, 100 proof, you know. Well. There's another guy in town I want you to meet, and I want to get his opinion on it. It's a guy that doesn't even like moonshine. We're going to try to convert him. Okay. Uh, since you've been sipping, I'll do the driving. Come on with me, man. All right, man. let's go, David, man. I'll see you later, <laughs> man. We'll see you, Tom. Thank you, man. When we come back, Travis checks out a popular local distillery on Coomer's Country. While in LaGrange, Kentucky, Travis felt it was important to stop off at the Kentucky Artisans Distillery and show off his new moonshine to their master distiller to get his thoughts. Hey, how are you doing there? Hey, fine, how are you? Good, are you Travis? Yes, I am. Good, I'm Steve, I was expecting you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Tom is out and back and told me all about you and your product and so on, and uh, I'm anxious to take a sip of this. Let's see what you got. Steve's got an awful nice bourbon facility, but from what I hear, he don't care too much for moonshine, or at least any moonshine he's had in the past. Well, come on back, and I'll take you back, and uh, this is just sort of our gift shop up here in front, and uh, these are some artifacts from old distilleries uh, that I picked up over a period of time. You know, an old still, you're probably familiar with that thing. Yeah, I recognize that piece there. I had one like it, but it didn't have this uh, top piece on it here. I guess somebody's kind of added that to make it do something. Yeah, they, they're quite, quite uh, uh, ambitious with their style and design. These have trays in them just like the new stills. Oh, yeah. Column still has, yeah. and the product come up, hit the trays, and condenses down, and rises up, and hit the next trays, and condense down. So, uh, for this time, this, is, this, this guy was more than moonshiner. He was sort of an engineering moonshiner. Yeah. My grandpa was no engineer, but he can make moonshine better than this steel can. What's that yeah. thing there? That's test the grain. That's a moisture okay. tester. Okay, moisture. Put the grain in and uh, plug it in, and it gives you the moisture. And oh, yeah. This is for just lab testing. This is an old alcohol tester right here. That's me, an old alcohol tester. Maybe I need to be in a museum someday. Yeah, and that's just an old for hand labeler, oh, you know, okay. for just yeah. for moonshine. Put your label on the bottle. Yeah. And that's an old refractometer for checking the sugar in your product before oh. you distill it off. But let me let me take you back over here, and I'll I'll take you and uh, I'll show you where we're going. Okay. Yeah, that works. Steve, he took me a big tour of his steels, and he got some steels from way back in the '30s. Beautiful stuff. Eventually, we meet back up with Tom. Got the moonshine oh, set up in your headquarters, Good. my Looking friend. Looking forward to this. Come on over here, man. He's just dying to find out what Steve thought of my moonshine. That's my grandfather's recipe. It smells good. Well, well, so so far, so good, right? So far, so good. <laughs> okay. And what proof is this? 100 proof. 100 proof, yeah. okay. Not bad, truly. I'd say that's good. Tastes like it was off the, a still, a clean. Yeah, it's clean. Are you filtering it all with anything or? No. Nothing? It's right off the still. Right off okay. the still, yeah. No, I'd say it's, uh, it's good. Now it's flavor time. Let's see what he thinks about the cinnamon. Smell the cinnamon. Yeah, you can it's smell the cinnamon in it. Cinnamon fruit. Sticks. Some people like that and some don't. Sweet? Yeah, yeah, pretty pretty sweet. Yeah, no, it's good. Yeah. 
Two down, one more to go. Well, this is a uh, part of an old uh, theory. Moonshiners used to dye their, uh, in the oil rich areas of Kentucky, they would dye it black so the revenuers wouldn't catch it. They thought they were ham handling samples of crude oil. They wouldn't yeah. necessarily put them in a mason jar. They'd put them in a crude oil barrel. Okay. A lot of people. So it looks like oil. Looks like oil, and I think we're going to darken it a little bit, but uh, then we started realizing you know, a little coffee may not be a bad idea to add to the black here, so it's a coffee moonshine. You can smell the coffee. Steve's got a fancy nose like mine. He know what good moonshine tastes like. I guess a man could take that and, and mix it with his coffee every morning and it'd be, be about right. <laughs> I mean, it really get up good. It really is. It's, it's very sweet. Looks like we got a thumbs up on all three. I see bourbon growing. I see spirits is growing. I think that the, the moonshine category is done well. Uh, in certain parts of the regions. Uh, anytime you introduce a product, you got the people that at the end of the day, there's always the ones that are good that'll make it, and the ones that aren't good won't make it. So how do you make, how do we make ours good so they make it? Uh, I, well, I, first of all, I will say it's, it's, it tastes to me like a good moonshine. Yeah, that's pretty in fact, good, pretty I almost didn't moonshine. believe it was moonshine, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was on the good side. If we could get a bourbon guy here at this Kentucky, artist distillery to like our shine and we will be on to something. The three of them kicked back and enjoyed some of Steve's bourbon for a bit before heading out. But they had one last stop before leaving town. Stay tuned. Cumbers Country is being brought to you by Black Gold Moonshine. Real Kentucky Moonshine Made the Right Way. And by Oldham County Tourism, three bourbon brands, horse farms, and 30 trains a day. And by Truck Claws, get your truck unstuck. And by Jeffrey Machine, the world's largest privately owned auger company. And by Dustless Blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. Boy, they had a nice distillery over yonder, didn't they? Yeah, they did. They're making a whole lot of money and Oh, moonshine. man, yeah. yeah. I guess this is where we go, Tom. I don't know. It's a part of the Odom Farm Tour, I think. Yeah. Hi, welcome to Second Stride. <laughs> yeah, I'm Travis Cummer. I'm Travis. I'm Kate. Tom McConnell. We, hey, we were, Tom. We were over, uh, uh, who was the boy uh, over there we were just talking to at the distillery? Steve Thompson. Uh -huh. He Steve said, Tom. Travis is in town, he's in the distilling business and uh -huh. has been around horses like me all his life and Steve was saying this was a really good place to, and you guys do a lot of good work, you take old race horses and... We do, I'll show you, yeah, come, on. come on. Oh let's yeah, let's find out. So what we do is we take thoroughbred race horses off the racetrack because they're slow or they're injured. Uh, most of them are between the ages of three and six years old and we we retrain them to do a different sort of sport. Oh, okay. As far they can be barrel racers, they can be trail horses, dressage horses, or a venting or jumping over the jumps. Oh, I see. And here's one right here. And you don't sell them; you adopt them. We adopt now, them. What do you mean? What is? What well, do you mean? we're we're a rescue, just like the Humane Society okay. rescues dogs and cats. So you're like a nonprofit? We're a nonprofit. We're a 501c3. We retrain them, teach them new things. Yeah, because they can come out a little high strung off, they the, can. off the racing and the thoroughbred. They can, world. but actually this guy, this is um, Give Me the Ball, and he actually just raced on Friday. Did she say this, Give Me the Ball? Is this a horse or a retriever? He's, he's just kind of a curious guy, but he's not really... How old is he? He is three. Three? Mm-hmm. What kind of conditioning do you all do to get them kind of transferred over to their new life? They're not running wide <laughs> right. open and all the stress of racing. Right. You know? We let them come here and just um, see the new sights, hear the new sounds, okay. smell the new smells, and we put them in a round pen for a couple days to get used to it. Okay. And then we'll turn them out with other horses over here in the field. And Would you like to pet them? Yeah, I'd like to rub him. He's real sweet. 
What kind of ball does he like? <laughs> you know, I don't know. That says give me the ball. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering what kind of ball he like. <laughs> See, it ain't, it's he got it on a, this he side. He might be a football here, fan or something. <laughs> What are you looking for, Travis? Tell how old he is. What do you think? They say he's three, you believe him? Yeah, I say he's three. Okay, well how can you tell when you open the mouth like that? What well, you look for? at him, Tom. Hey, see his two big teeth out in front? Yep. yep. He ain't never got all that, he's still cutting teeth. Okay, okay. Hey Tom, come check my teeth. You can also sometimes tell by their tattoo, by the letter that's in the front of it. Yeah. It'll tell you what year they were born. Yeah. Okay, okay. How many horses do y'all have out here? Well, at this farm we have um, five, and we have another farm with uh, four or five more. Our other farm is where the ones that are too lame right now to be ridden um, go to recuperate and rehab. But this guy's sound, and um, he actually, we got him yesterday, and he's already been adopted, so. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Adopted already? I hope it's going somewhere warm or tropical one. So he's going to go up to Ohio to learn how to be an inventor. So, Ohio? Oh, I'm sorry. That's You guys are doing a good thing. Well, so. thank you. Well, uh, what well, do you think, Travis? You going to adopt another horse? You got some room no, down there. I don't care, so. I ain't got enough room in Fern Creek, Kentucky right now, but uh, you might you might have some room in Adair County. Yeah, well, there's probably some people down there who'd love to have some in Yeah, boys. yeah. You, well, they got a nice facility here, that's for sure, Tom. I Thank guess we you. need to. Yeah, we might take a look around here, so sure. uh, and just kind of walk around. But yeah. Thank you for your well, time. Well, thank you we all for coming this. out. Thank, thank you. you. Nice yeah. to meet you all. All right. Yeah. Keep up the good work. Thanks. <laughs> Looks like Travis had a fine day traveling around Oldham, Kentucky. That's pretty good. His moonshine is one step closer to reality, and he met some great people who do wonderful things for racehorses. Maybe Travis will come back and pick him up a new thoroughbred friend. See you next week in Coomer's Country.